I got 706. I'd like to call meeting in order, please. I stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Item 1A on the agenda. I'd like to get a motion to approve the minutes from February 10th, 2020 regular meeting, please. So moved. I have a motion for Bob. Do I have a second? I second the motion. Second from John. Any discussion, comments, corrections? <clears throat> Seeing none, all of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you. I uh, need a motion for the February 20th, 2020 budget workshop to accept those minutes, please. So moved. Was that from Lynn? Carrie. 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 I'll second it, Lynn. Lynn with a second. Yep. Any discussion, you, corrections? Uh, the corrections Lucia? for the spelling of Ziobro at the very end and adjournment. Okay. Z I O D R O. Not at that, right? My apologies. Yes, this is the. Uh, okay. This is the uh, here. Okay. Anything else? Yes, okay, all those in favor of, of accepting the minutes with the corrections signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I wasn't at the meeting. I abstained. Okay. And John abstained. I get a motion to accept February 24th regular meeting minutes. I have one correction on that as well. Okay. In 4C, um, the competition should be compensation. Workers. Okay. Are you on the 24th, Lynn? Yeah, that's the okay. 24th. Okay, so we've got that correction. I have a motion to accept the minutes. A motion to accept the minutes going I'm twice. Sorry, move to oh, yeah, yes. There's yeah. John. Second. And Bob with a second. Okay, any other corrections or comments? Seeing none, signify by saying aye for aye. the motion. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, and the last one, I uh, need a motion for February 25th, 2020 budget workshop. John Ziobro with a motion. Second. Bob with a second. Any discussions or corrections? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstaining. Two abstentions. Okay. Who's the other? It was John. John and John. John and John. John Corcoran. John C. John, John W. The other John. The other John. Good. Item 1B, additions to the agenda. Any additions to the agenda? I do have an addition uh, to discuss the Arizona trip that is scheduled for this spring break in April. You want to do that under April. superintendent's report? Not sure. Under 4E, Arizona. Field trip. Okay. Any other additions? Okay. I'm glad we have visitors here tonight. Any comments from visitors regarding agenda items? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, we will go down to the student representative report. Hello. Hello. Okay. <clears throat> so just wanted to put out there that today is the Eagles hockey first round of states tonight. That's super important because last year they did not make states. This is a big um, night for East Granby. We also recently just had our Pops concert last Friday. It was really fun, huge turnout, awesome. The band and chorus performed well. That was really fun. And then we have our dodgeball coming up on March 13th, and it's open to the community. And it's kind of a fun, friendly, like team rivalries to claim the championship and also bragging rights. Um, but it's an opportunity for East Granby students, faculty, and really just the whole community to come together for this fun competition about dodgeball. Um, we also have our FBLA conference, which is on March 17th. And FBLA, hey Gordy. And FBLA is the Future Business Leaders of America. That's a club we have at the school that a lot of kids are interested in. And it helps students prepare for their careers in business at this competition. And it's like academic competitions as well as leadership development. 
They have different kinds of workshops and presentations, such as like prejudged reports, presentations, re interviews, speeches. Um, coming up, we have our Matilda show. The East Granby Student Theater is presenting Matilda on March 7th, March 27th at 7 p.m. and March 28th at 2 and 7 p.m. And that is a great opportunity for all the kids to kind of show their artistic abilities on stage to everyone in the community. And that's usually really fun. Um, we have Outdoor Track, which starts the week of the 23rd this month. Um, outdoor Track is really a family-like atmosphere, and it's a good way for the upperclassmen and lowerclassmen to really bond. Um, the track meets usually tend to be very long. We get to know each other very well, and by the end of the season, we're basically siblings. <laughs> Um, and in regards to what's happening in classes, one thing that I really notice, SATs are coming up. Big thing for the juniors. Fortunately, Gordy and I are done with that, thank God. But it is a big deal for the juniors coming up, and I know the math, math department is working on um, SAT prep with junior math classes. Um, we have these things called SAT Fridays or Mondays where the teachers can really work one-on-one -on -one with a lot of the students and help them and prepare them for the SATs coming up as it is a big deal um, when applying for colleges. But yeah, that's all we got here. <laughs> Gordy, anything you want to add? Uh, not really. I think you heard a lot of it. And I just kind of yes. echoed, but I heard a glimpse of it and it felt pretty accurate. I was looking forward to your reports. Very much. Yes, thank you. Okay, moving down to item three, chairperson's report. Uh, my first thing I'd like to uh, commend the Board of Education. This happens to be Board of Ed Appreciation Month. I guess we found that out tonight. But I guess my appreciation for, this is for all, all of us. My appreciation is all the hours we've all spent together with negotiations. Uh, with superintendent search, we spent a lot of time. Uh, we've had a full board participating in, in it, and it was, uh, I thought, very worthwhile. I guess I really have to commend you because uh, somebody talked to me about overtime. I think people don't realize we do this as volunteers. Uh, we don't get paid. Uh, we're not state senators or federal employees, and we do this because uh, we're all taxpayers in East Granby, and I think we're as concerned as everybody is as what our expenses are. So I thank you again. We have some treats here from our superintendent, enjoy, but go home and you know thank yourself because I think uh, sometimes our work goes unnoticed. I know we hear a lot of complaints and that's okay. Uh, there are things to do and you know I'm glad you're volunteering to be willing to do those things, so thank you much. Uh, on the next snow, uh, superintendent search update. Uh, we have gone through two rounds of interviews. Uh, we've had some highly qualified candidates. We've had interesting interviews and we, expect to have an announcement made by the end of March. So very, very soon we'll have a public announcement to be made on that, on that front. And part B, request the Board of Finance. Uh, some of you know from last year, and I have to commend our acting superintendent, Mrs. Brandy, for Finally, and to Ray for getting all the accounting issues that we've had. We've had part-time business people, we've had part-time superintendents, and we've been able to put everything in order now, get things squared away with the state, uh, get squared away with the town, and we still come up with a realized savings of $49,238.26 from last year. Uh, in the recommended actions, I'm going to be asking the board for a motion to put that into the Board of Ed return funds to the non-lapsing account with the Board of Finance so that we have those dollars to use for something in the future. Uh, I would like to say publicly that we have done this before on two other occasions. The only time we've ever taken money from that account was one to help with the study of the roofing projects that were done here in East Granby. There was a tens of thousands of dollars that had to be put up front, and fortunately we were able to go to this fund because we certainly didn't have it in our general year-to-year -year operating budget. And number two, last fall when we found out about the conditions of the tennis courts. Uh, instead of waiting till the spring when they would need to probably or could be replaced at about $250,000, uh, we decided that we could take 20, about $25,000 for the non-lapsing account and get a fall repair and then a spring fix coming up this season. So those are the two things we use that account for and I hope the board later on 
and we'll consider voting to put the $49,000 in that same, same account because we know there's always things that come up. So with that said, I'll turn it over to the superintendent's report. Okay, good evening everyone. In recognition of Board of Education Appreciation Month, East Granby Public School students benefit every day from the dedication and the commitment of the Board of Education members. Aside from regular scheduled meetings, you spend countless hours at subcommittee meetings and school events. You advocate for our district through conversations in the community and at the state level. There is so much, as Bob said, behind the scenes work that is needed to keep our school district high functioning, engaging, inclusive, and safe. Thank you for supporting public education and for all you do on behalf of our children. Please know that you are appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, first up I have the budget. That's what we're starting with. John and John, you may want to relocate. Okay, so um, this evening I have a presentation that represents a 2.33 recommended budget with also at the end um, a proposal to reach a 2% budget increase as directed from the Board of Finance. I'll be going through uh, the information on these slides, and uh, Ray Engel, um, our business manager, is here to help provide some uh, clarification if need be. Okay, the first slide shows our projected enrollment. The United States Department of Educational Statistics anticipates a fierce decline in school-aged children over the next 10 years. Of the 66,000 decline in student population expected in Connecticut alone from now until the year 2027, East Granby is expected to maintain flat enrollment. Our planning, programming, and budgeting reflects this information. five what we would consider key budget drivers for this year's development um, of the budget. The first is special education programming costs has seen a significant rise due to an increase of student required services and transportation. So for those of our students that require an out of district uh, placement, we do um, also need to um, have transportation for the students. When we budget, we budget for what we know currently. There, there is no way to anticipate um, any changing needs. So uh, currently, this year, we did have an unexpected rise in our special education costs and certainly considered a key driver for um, the upcoming budget year. Estimated increase for teachers of a 2.74% per new contract, estimated to be $216,891.50. Estimated pending agreement for non-certified salaries is 2.5% or $40,059. We are currently still in negotiations with the non-certified union, which is why it's pending. Electricity projection consi considers the air conditioning project for All Grove School, and that would be an estimated increase of $66,352, and a projected increase in fuel oil at just over $17,000. To give a, a little explanation around the actual budget process, the original budget proposal dated December 18, 2019, which is the top yellow bar, 
resulted after each building principal met with department staff and directors formulated budgets based on current numbers or programs in district. There were meetings with the administrator, business manager, and acting superintendent. Staff were informed, as in past years, that any increase over the current budget needed to have a justification. A member of the Board of Education sat in on these meetings and an invite was also extended to the Board of Finance. Those meetings resulted in a 5.41% increase over the current operating budget. Following that date, the first round of modifications, we were able to get to 4.45% and what we did, we rolled back current or less than current numbers for all of our instructional supplies and in district. Healthcare costs were negotiated from 8% to 5%. Administrators also ensured accountability in salary lines to match current staff. So, so what that means is we went through every single line. If we had a retirement a couple years ago that wasn't accounted for, we were able to identify every staff member in our operating line to make sure our numbers were exact for salaries. The final round of budget modifications included additional reductions in health care premiums, potential increases to the non-certified union that would be expected this fiscal year, and taken out of next year's budget. Also additional reduction in unemployment insurance, liability, and errors in emission insurance. Professional consulting services and professional development. That is how we reached the 2.33% um, increase over this current operating budget. I'm going to have Ray speak to a little bit about, about the re revenues that we receive in district. What you're seeing on the, on the screen right now is your, uh, many people confuse, confuse this between education cost sharing and excess cost grant. The education cost sharing is basically the funding that the state supplies the, uh, the district. Uh, we get very little money from the state, as all of you know. And the uh, 1.4 million is, um, and I've said this in the past, less than I used to get as alliance funding in my previous district, so. Um, but long story short, these are all a listing of all the grants. Uh, the choice grant is your largest one that uh, we utilize. And then the local funding on the bottom, is the tuition other, from other towns is mostly from Hartford uh, for special education reimbursements for services that we provide and bill back to Hartford. And the pay, pay for play is about approximately 33000 a year. It has been on average for the last three or four years. All total, that's uh, approximately what we get on an annual <coughs> basis um, for all funding that I can see at the moment, unless something new crops up. This is uh, where we, the funding that we get on the grant side of the state revenues. So the 2.33% budget is a total of $17,375,553. That's an increase of $395,000 in five, $395,553, or again, a 2.33%. Take this one? Okay. What you're seeing here, um, this is the summary of uh, most of what we're looking at in terms of increases, or, or not so much increases, but what makes up that 2.33%. Uh, the column on the right, don't, uh, I want to make sure I explain this properly, it's 60% of the overall increase. That's what that equates to. It does not add up. If you try to add it up, it's not going to add up to 2.33. Everything on the right, except for the 2.33, is a percentage of the overall $395,000 increase that we're looking at. And this is what makes up uh, those, those increases. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to uh, respond. So the, uh, the business insurance uh, line item, because it's in parentheses, does that mean that that went down? That went down. You have to remember, as part of our last meeting, we took funding out of that. There was approximately, I believe, um, that it was health care, we took 18000 out. Uh, but there was at least 10000 and uh, I had some other savings in there. But.
overall it dropped twenty seven thousand dollars and also um, the, the transportation line the regular transportation that's also in parentheses for the same reason yeah there was a minor minor reduction, reduction. okay guys yeah. 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 A 2.33% budget allows for the continuance of strong and comprehensive programming for all of our students. There are no additional staff added through this budget, although there is a need in the area of special education. This budget proposal maintains East Granby Board of Education class, class size guidelines and provides for business office enhancements in the area of payroll operations. This budget also supports contractual obligations and takes into account a slight decrease for group health insurance. The 2.33% budget increase also reflects um, increases in workers' compensation and adjustments for utilities and maintenance, which offset, excuse me, <coughs> which offset the savings for business insurance and the small decrease in transportation that you saw on the previous slide. And finally of note, over $645,000 in salaries will be paid from grants and not from this operating budget. Okay, that's primarily again from the choice grant, but we also have some salaries being paid um, through our IDEA grant as well. And I'd like to share a couple areas that we have identified as potential uh, budget risks. Um, again, special education needs evolve. Budgeting included is what we know at this given time regarding identified students and services um, in our school district. So depending on changes in, identify, in identification of any of our current students or any children that may move in, um, that's always a, a variable, that amount. Instructional supplies were rolled back to current year's numbers. And potential under budget line items include uh, building maintenance and technological improvements to the business office. Um, we are looking to enhance our operations in the area of payroll, accounts payable, and purchasing with uh, additional software that will help us not only streamline, but also become more efficient in our business operations. And again, that's potential. So it's, we're not saying that this is definitely a risk. It, it just is on the cusp of, you know, depending on how things evolve. This is just a, a pie chart to give you a, visual, a visible uh, representation of uh, essentially all those percentages that we have spoken about. You know, as watching a, a budget presentation in a neighboring district, it was interesting because with the largest being contractual salaries and benefits, they actually um, kind of sliced off the salaries and benefits for special education costs because that is such a, a key variable in, in all districts. We have that um, as part of our overall uh, contractual salaries and benefits in this uh, visual. by the Board of Finance to present a 2% budget increase. This would be accomplished with an additional reduction of $56,000. We are waiting on some dental and vision insurance quotes, which might realize a small savings. We will look across all staffing areas and class sizes to make a final modification. There is no determination right now as to where the $56,000 will come from as students are still enrolling in kindergarten and course selection has not yet been finalized at the high school. So again, um, needing to present a 2% budget to the Board of Finance, uh, we will look for an additional $56,000 reduction to the overall operating budget. We have gone through our budget uh, many, many times and these are the two areas that we would need to focus on to get to that point. And that is my last slide. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? <coughs> um, I see. Uh, back to the pie chart that you showed and spoke about um, maybe putting a graphic in the uh, 
for special ed staffing, would you have a percentage roughly that would be a part of that chunk of the pie for special ed staffing? Under contractual? We, we did look at the cost of, uh, it might take us a few minutes to get through it. We like have it all, we can certainly get that information. Rough estimate. One second. While Ray is looking, does anybody have an additional question? Para expenditures one million two hundred fifty-five thousand. It's not all first. So in all of our yeah. all of yeah. our paraprofessionals in district mm -hmm. um, are connected to children with IEPs. Yeah. Total um, money expended on special education is three three and a half million dollars. To use round numbers. And next next year it's budgeted for three point seven seven five. And that's. Uh, That's everything. Staffing. Staffing, yep. transportation, okay. assessments, salaries, everything. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Could you Anyone just, else? I'm sorry, could you to the last slide, please? The last slide? Yes, please. And I mean, I was hearing it, but maybe a little bit more in detail as to what makes up the 56. What makes up the 56? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I can tell you what we will look at to make up the 56. Um, again, we're waiting on some dental and vision uh, insurance quotes. We might realize a very small savings in that. Um, then we will look at staffing across the board. So not necessarily teachers, not necessarily pro paraprofessionals. We'll look to see our class size guidelines, you know, pre-K 12, and our class size rosters pre-K 12, to see if there's any um, FTEs that we will be able to reduce. Any other questions? I know many hours have been spent on the budget, but uh, this is an opportunity for us publicly to present it and ask any final questions about it before we vote on it tonight. John? One comment. Um, later on in the uh, our agenda, we have first we have vote on this budget, and then we have vote on a contract. One's going to affect the other, so don't you think that we should switch the two around? Uh, well. You're saying the vote of the contract should come prior to the vote of the budget? Right, because that may change the number. Well, we can't vote on a contract if we have no budget. I understand that. If you don't have a budget, if I have no budget, I can't pay anyone, we need to approve a budget, and then, it, then if it doesn't work, we may need to modify it later, but well, I think we need to approve a budget. So does this mean we can modify the contract? I don't think we can modify no, the contract. No, but we can modify what we do if there's a problem with that. We could then make some cuts and changes later. Yeah, but we have, we have to approve a budget. I mean, right. we, we but can- But the budget numbers will be more fleshed out if we have a contract that we have approved. If I'm not mistaken, though, John, I think that the projections that were made by the by the, the board and certainly by Ray and the superintendent reflect the fact that they're banking on what this uh, proposed contract will bring to us for the next fiscal year. Are you sure? Is that and certainly the fact? That that's certainly, I certainly what I heard at the. At I the, used the tentative contract right. to generate. Our most recent budget numbers. I and received I, it about and I believe four or five weeks ago. And I believe we're also using the projection for one of our other bargaining groups to which we're still in negotiation with. So, I mean, so you have to, you know, you have to look at and, and project and with the best information available. I think that's, I hope that's what this reflects. It is. Um, I do kind of see your point though, absolutely. But, um, I see, I see your point, but I don't necessarily agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see, I see it, John, but I think we, both these items have been discussed in subcommittees, and I think we're all aware of it, and 
you know, they both come up tonight to vote on. They both both do. Okay. Do you, do you think the or is the order going to affect you? Believe the way the board votes. Well, it would make sense. Well, I understand. I think we can leave it the way it is. We we need to do a we need to do a budget. Uh, regardless of anything else, and then we certainly need to hire people and have contracts to pay people to work within our budget. So, yeah. I guess I guess we can keep it like this. Okay. So there will be um, an opportunity to hopefully a, a motion to approve a, a 2.33 budget as uh, recommended, with an understanding if the board of finance requires a 2.0 budget, um, we will come back and look at those numbers. I I would just like. To add, Missy, I would hope that the motion is for a 2% because that's what we were requested to do. I mean, I don't mind showing them that, but uh, I think the Board of I, not not that I think, the Board of Finance told us clearly they wanted to see a 2%. We, we may not be able to tell them where the staffing is going to be, but I think if we tell them that 56000 is going to come from dental and vision insurance quotes and staffing, that would bring us down to... Uh, the request they gave us. Otherwise, we're not meeting their their request. And I think some of them may be bothered by that, Michelle. I have a question. So they want, um, is it that they want to see an approved budget? No, by the they, want budget two two they want to see a 2%. They want to see a 2% budget. Then we could approve a 2.3% per, and, and show that. them a 2%, and it's still meeting their requirements, unless you're telling me that they want to see a 2%, a Board of Ed Education approved 2% budget. And I would agree with that, and I would say this, that the, um, I can't imagine that the Board of Finance has the authority to tell the Board of Education what they should be adopting. Period. Mm -hmm. And if we're going on the budget. As long as we show them they this, certainly, so yeah. They certainly okay. can okay. ask us to show them 2%, but I don't think that they have the authority to tell us what our you know, what our financial needs are to run the district next year. Next well, I year. totally agree with you on that, but I thought their directive was to come back with a 2% budget yeah. to show them, not one that we're approving, but one that we're showing them. If we want to approve 2.33 for us, I'm comfortable, but I don't want to then go and try to sell to the Board of Finance. I would like to give them the 2%, then we can push okay. for the 2.33, then I'm for trying to sell something else. But all they asked for, not what we need, they said come back with a 2% budget. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the starting point, and maybe 2.33 will be the ending point. And I think it's important for a Board of Education to say to its community, this is what we support as a functional budget for our community, and, and, take, and be able to offer that to the community, so that then they can go to the Board of Finance meetings and listen to the discussion and the um, in their arguments for a 2% or mm -hmm. lower, God forbid, but that's, it's an important statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I'm it, good with that. Yeah, I think it should be clear from, from the foregoing that the um, Board of Education uh, is certainly recommending a 2.33, and that would be our druthers. Uh, but we also are directed by the Board of Finance to show us what a uh, 2.0 would look like. And therefore, I think we will be doing uh, both by mm -hmm. showing, uh, doing what we're doing. We're, we're, we're adopting uh, the, the, the recommended budget of the superintendent who are at the same time showing them uh, what a 2.0 would look like. And I think that we would be covering the bases in terms of both our, our mandate, which is to uh, maximize student achievement and, and to have a budget that reflects what we feel will get us there. And at the same time, also complying with the mandate of the uh, Board of Finance, which is to say, show us what a 2.2% budget looks like. And I think uh, we have done, we will have done both. Good. Let, uh, let's put together a motion that considers both, and uh, I think that'll then work pretty well. Mm -hmm. so we make a, oh, we're going to do that later. That's yeah. okay. Anything else on budget before Missy moves to B? Okay. Go ahead, Missy. Okay, I have a, a correspondence from the uh, school principal, Mr. Um, Tony DeMello. On behalf of East Granby High School administration, staff, coaches, and student athletes, we would like to thank Joel Ziff for the past five years that he has dedicated to the growth of sports at East Granby High School. 
As athletic director, Joel has exhibited a passion for the student athletes in our school. The time he has spent building our athletic programs can be seen in the growth of students who participate in the varied sports. As athletic director, Joel instituted very clear expectations for our student athletes. Athletes are students first, and their grades, as well as their demeanor, were held to a high standard. The mutual respect between Joel and all of our student athletes is clear in the relationships that he built and curated both in school and on the field or court of play. Joel may even hold the unofficial record for the most games attended by any athletic director in the NCCC conference this year. The expectations that he has set forth through student, parent, and coaches' handbooks, as well as during his seasonal information sessions, has allowed our school to maintain a respectful and positive athletic culture. Sportsmanship is an East Granby High School calling card, and Joel has been key in the school's drive and being considered a positive atmosphere to visit. Again, we thank Joel Ziff for his dedication and passion for high school sports and the scholar athletes that he has served. And I would also like to add, as middle school principal, uh, Joel did a fantastic job um, encouraging our middle school students to support ha high school athletics through a variety of activities um, you know, throughout the year. And, and it was 80 to 100 of our middle school students that were on the, the sidelines cheering or in the bleachers, um, the high school athletes, which, was, um, which was, was a lot of fun for them, and the high school athletes did as well. Could second to say a comment and sure. uh, to just behalf as a parent as well. Um, I do uh, agree that he has attended many many games. Um, uh, he's very visible. Uh, I think in his tenure, our soccer under the lights was became a really community mainstay, and I think that's a lot to do with his enthusiasm. Um, I have to say that he also. Um, surprised uh, a lot of the community members when he really embraced uh, social media as a way to promote the sports amongst kids and did a lot of different um, things. We saw his Twitter feeds and his Facebook Facebook posts of, of um, and getting the word out about games. Um, being a hockey mom, you know, hockey isn't, because we're in a co-op, isn't always in the forefront, but he always uh, made an effort to show um, the, the team and, and any team how they were doing. But, so thank you for I think and on behalf of the board thanks for your service. Okay the next um, I wanted to share a little bit about our curriculum consortium visit. Recently Marjorie Light who is the director of curriculum and professional development joined with other area assistant superintendents and directors of curriculum in a new consortium. The group meets every month or every other month to discuss new state mandates, college and career pathways, and other curriculum matters. Their last meeting was centered around the Next Generation Science Standards, or more commonly known as NGSS. During the meeting, Marjorie discovered that our district, bless you, is ahead of others with the implementation of this new science curriculum. She invited members to join us here in East Granby to see inquiry-based and phenomena-inspired learning in action. A principal, a district, assistant superintendent, and two curriculum coaches from other districts joined us here last Tuesday, March 3rd. Susan Cavanaugh, the K-5 curriculum consultant, and Marjorie put together a program where they discussed the development of the science curriculum. And in the afternoon, the leaders from other schools were able to go into the kindergarten, first, and second grade classrooms to see the NGSS in action. So thank you, Marjorie, for spearheading that. Okay, the next is uh, an announcement. Uh, annually, we have a dinner celebration for those staff members that are either retiring or who have celebrated um, 20 years, I'm gonna say 50 years in district. <laughs> 20 years in district. Um, that event will be happening on April 30th, 2020, and you will receive um, an invitation, but just so you can write that down and put that in your calendars, we'd certainly love to have you uh, join us. And that is at Lenote in East Windsor. And then the added um, agenda item Arizona. is regarding the Arizona trip. There is a Board of Ed uh, previously approved trip to Arizona this spring break, okay, which is uh, in April. I don't need to tell you the concern with the coronavirus or the COVID-19 uh, right now. There are lots of cancellations, lots of uncertainty. 
Um, I just got done with an hour long, um, I participated in a conference call with uh, Governor Lamont, uh, the State Director of Emergency Services, the State Director of Public Health, Dr. Carter, who is a state uh, epidemiologist, and um, State Department of Education, uh, Commissioner Cardona, as well with I think every other commissioner who has the title in the state was a part of this call. Um, and they have some guidelines that are highly recommended is the language that they're using. Um, and they're looking to avoid functions or events that have more than 100 people. They are looking for stricter guidelines with people who are self, who need to self-quarantine. Uh, currently, Rhode Island is in a state of emergency because of a, a recent school trip, is my understanding. This was just announced um, again at this um, at this um, conference call. So the issue we have with Arizona, even though it's in April, is our advisors, our faculty advisors, are, are in a short time frame in order to, for the company that they work with, which is Appleseed, to redirect or refund the plane cost because everything is paid for. What they will do is postpone the trip uh, until next April, and the students will get vouchers to participate at that point. Currently, there is no um, funding that will go back to students. And again, this was a major issue at, during this conference call with multiple uh, towns. The students that we have um, attending or planning to attend are all underclassmen, so they will be in district next year. So we don't have any seniors uh, currently. We don't have any seniors signed up. So there will be no loss on that part. Um, you know, the, this is kind of a risky time. Um, it is a couple months away, but there is a lot of concern, and nobody sees the situation getting better very soon. So I guess what I would say is my recommendation, um, and we can have a discussion about postponing the trip until uh, next April vacation. That's definitely prudent. Mm -hmm. so, definitely. I just hope that the students will still be interested in knowing. Yeah. I would hope you don't need a vote from the city. No, I just, I mean, yeah, yeah. Still. I mean, it's unfortunate. Yeah. You know, I know um, people are looking forward to it, but I think, as you said, John, I think it's prudent right now given the kind of the state that we are in. Well, if you cancel later on, you lose more. Yes, because Apple C needs to contact the um, their airline to get the money back for the tickets or whatever they do on their end, and that needs to be done by I think uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay. Nothing's okay. being refunded to anybody. It's all vouchers. It's all vouchers. Right. So the only concern I would have would be if there's a student who next year is either has either left district or is unable to attend, I think that we as a district need to consider doing something to assist those parents and their students. Okay. And one thing we're doing based on this conversation, I, I, yeah, I understand, moving forward, uh, we will be very clear, um, crystal clear, like a separate signed document, um, recognizing, because this is the um, protocol for all of the uh, tour groups that I've been familiar with, and again, on this conference call, there are many people who are facing concerns because they have seniors who will not be able to participate and they're not getting refunded you know, financially. So um, we will be sure that we are extremely clear and parents understand um, what they will receive you know, should something occur that doesn't allow it. But you know, thank you for that point, John. I think that's... And this, is not, this occurrence is not covered under any insurance policy the families would have purchased at the beginning of the trip planning. It like is not. So if a child, no, it is not. They get the vouchers. The voucher is what they would receive. Yes, we, we've spent a lot of time with both the Appleseed, uh, which is our, our tour group for Arizona this April, and uh, it might be kind of in the back of your mind, but we also have a trip to Spain in June, and that is through EF Tours. So we will have to revisit that probably, um, you know, keep an eye of what's going on, and you might have to revisit that as well. Missy, what are the parents of the students on the trip the voicing? I, uh, do they share the same? I mean, I can imagine they're all very concerned, and yes. we have the same mindset, so we're not 
you know. Right. I, I did ask Dr. Faulkner to see if she could reach out to a few parents to kind of get some idea. Um, because again, this is evolving so quickly. Today alone, I got 10 updates regarding COVID-19. And that's just from, you know, 8 o'clock until I, I left at 5. So um, the situation is evolving very quickly. Um, there were no cases in Connecticut. There was one when I sent out the communication this morning. Now there are two in Connecticut. Um, so I, it's just a matter of time, I feel, and, you know, based on what I heard today in the conference call, that we will see a rise um, of uh, verified verified cases. Most parents seem okay with either way. Um, I, I, I'm not aware of the parents that she spoke to that they would be upset, you know, with the voucher. Of course, the kids are looking forward to it, but I think everyone understands, you know, the, the, the situation that we're in. And again, you know, right now we have two cases in Connecticut and, you know, a month from now, that could be much higher. Michelle, um, I'm actually one of the um, parents. Actually, I was going to go on the trip as well. I didn't want to put you on the spot, Carrie. Uh, no, that's so fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so, and Dr. Puffner did call me today. Um, just from my own perspective, and obviously I can't speak um, concerning the other parents that she spoke to, but, um, you know, there's, there's an, a difference between a, a risk of getting the coronavirus because you're traveling and also additional risks involved with, okay, now you're in Arizona, what if someone gets sick? What if there's a quarantine? You know, what if we can't get back through Boston? You know, there, there's a lot of variables that are just unknowns. And, and given the fact that we could, um, we can go next year, mm -hmm. then we might as well just do that and play it safe. Mm -hmm. That was my thinking anyway. Mm -hmm. Is there any choice, uh, any chance there's going to be a cost increase next year? Are we guaranteed the cost? That has That's a good question, Lynn. Yeah. I, I can find that out. On the point of, of um, the April break, um, does the administration plan on any statement to families that um, may be planning international trips, other trips through the country, you know, while, during break and then coming back because message from Governor Lamont about um, kids on spring break in college and university um, that they don't have to go home, they could stay on campus, that if they go home and come back to campus, they should self-quarantine for right. a period of time. Right. So, you know, other families travel, they do different things. So I did send out a communication this morning, yeah. um, and uh, essentially I, I'm in contact with the Farmington Valley Department of Health very regularly, um, and, and the guideline right now is, or the recommendation is for families to let us know if they're traveling and to self-quarantine, which that in itself is a very loose kind of recommendation. Um, like I know my daughter right now, she just texted me, you know, a couple hours ago. All of her classes down in the Fairfield area, they have no more face-to-face -face classes. Everything just went onli online as of today um, until at least the end of March. Um, you know, so uh, we are following the guidelines. I cannot be more restrictive than what the recommendation, yeah, right. you know, comes. Um, I think families recognize the, it is a highly uh, contagious uh, illness, highly contagious. And I think families are recognizing and um, would hope that, you know, should they come back from a level three um, or even a level two, that is still a, a lot of the uh, illnesses that they would self-quarantine. Um, as soon or if, if anything changes, um, I will certainly uh, send out, you know, uh, additional notifications. And at this point, I just asked families if they are traveling abroad uh, to please let the school principal know uh, so that we can, you know, help monitor. We are, we will keep confidence, you know, we understand confidentiality. Uh, it just helps us to better protect, you know, the the, the, the greater good if we are, we're able to work with the families that might have already traveled or might be traveling. Just a few points of clarification. If people are traveling within the United States for spring break, do you still need to know that? The guidelines say no. Okay. Although then they say to avoid areas of like 100 or more people. So if you think about a plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then the levels one, two, and three, they must be defined someplace, they right? Are. Okay. Yes. yes, they are. 
I get, I get what I suppose. I'm sorry. Let me just let me just oh, finish that because I said they are. I can. It's on the uh, can, uh, CDC website okay. under travel information. Okay. It actually gives you a lot of visuals also, so you can mm -hmm. see you know color coded the areas that are level one, okay. level two, and level three, and they give you the specifics uh, with each of them. Okay. Could change. Could change it, overnight. Yes, it, it does change. Yes. <laughs> yes. It would be certain areas that were would be at higher risk than others. Say, for example. Washington State or Rhode Island or some places where there's a, has a hot spot, um, it wouldn't be similar everywhere because there's some certain places where the disease hasn't uh, presented itself yet. But. Right. Right. Can I ask a question? I saw the uh, memo that you sent out to everyone concerning this cleaning and everything that's going on to try to prevent the spread of the disease in the school. Have you relaxed any of the uh, like chemical cleaning things, like are you allowed to use bleach now? We are. That's a okay. recent change. Okay. That's because a recent change. I think change. that's the only thing that really works. So yes. I was kind of hoping that you did. Start. Well, it's not up to me. It's it was up to the. Um, right. You know, um, that was about a week ago. They were going to consider it, and they just had a meeting, and they kind of uh, lifted that so that bleach-based products, you know, are able to be used, you know, for cleaning. Um, try finding some supplies right now is challenging. Yeah, the are so, yes, um, but we also um, Steve Mosier, who who was here, he did just purchase um, additional kind of technology safe spray so that um, teachers can wipe down keyboards and Chromebooks and mice more regularly as well. And we'll be once we get that in, we'll be dispersing that to the teachers. How, how are the kids doing? Are they worried, various degrees of worry, some not worried at all? You know, Kara, I have to tell you, I haven't had a chance to be in the, the I mean, I'm with the little kids, so I don't, I don't think it's as, you know, uh, they understand as much. Anything from the older kids? Do you hear anything? I was doing nasty today if we were going to be closed for coronavirus. <laughs> Say no, go home, do home. Yeah, that's, they're worried about just being able to stay home, basically. Well, actually, the other thing that came with today's conference call is they're saying if you are going to close, they want you to close completely and then make up the days, either in June or during vacation. So they don't because, want you to be online or well, try to establish something. So there's a lot of conversation with that, John, because we have been told to, you know, start, you know, preparing for distant learning, which we have. The issue with that is there's um, some state requirements that we probably will not be able to meet with our either our identified students, uh, teacher contract, or, go, or any type of our, our contracts. So they're recommending if you close, you close, shut down completely for two weeks, and then make up the days somewhere. But that's a recommendation. There's no directive either way. I did read that, but it's, it's really difficult to close the schools for two weeks and then be able to make it up, make them all up before the end of June, like they stated there. Yeah. Would a, to decrease the amount of exposure to each other, would a late opening on, on successive days um, be past state laws? I mean, we right now don't have to make up a day that's a um, um, delayed opening. Correct. And you know, then it just decreases the number of hours everyone's together yeah. so I, I mean and I also thought you know should this um, kind of spike in numbers you know I might request that we did an, an early closing so that we can do a kind of a thorough cleaning again um, you know again our custodians are doing additional uh, cleaning uh, and right now you know we're, we're good in this part of the state um, but again it's it is changing constantly when is our last day of school right now the 17th so could we f even fit in two weeks if we had to close? It would be the 29th. It would be nine, like yeah. seven days. We're supposed to approve credit. It would be 10, 10, 10 school days, no, right? Be, and you can't be go into July. July. Short. Okay. You can't. It's a state. The state may have to. Right? You, we cannot go into July. No, no, yeah. no that was clear from and the you, and you cannot, And you cannot yeah. even go into Saturdays either. Correct. And you can't do double sessions. <laughs> we went through this. So there's a lot of school all, districts in a bind. We went through this years ago when we had all the snow. Yes. So great. Yes. Is there any effort, especially with the younger students, for more opportunities of washing hands because they're the ones that tend to touch and yes. everything goes in their mouths? Yes, there is. 
I would think that if this is truly a situation where we need to close for however long it is, John, that we don't need to be concerned about July, and we don't need to be concerned about what our bargaining units, what the um, State of Connecticut Department of Education, I don't think we need to be concerned about well, I think that we'll whatsoever. I think that if there's a situation that would cause us to have to be closed for health reasons, people in the state of Connecticut are certainly going to understand that we have to do what we have to do. Um, I had heard earlier that uh, Fulton County, this is where Atlanta is, Atlanta, Georgia, they're closed tomorrow. Their school district, mm -hmm. I don't know how long they intend to close for, but they're doing a, a closure tomorrow. Um, and I can answer uh, Carrie's comment. Um, my son, Nate, traveled um, last Wednesday with my wife Natalie out to Portland, Oregon, and leading up to it a few days beforehand, um, my entire family was just on total pins and needles. Right. Whether or not that would be a smart thing to do. Um, we got uh, email from um, the folks at Southwest. Southwest is um, taking every single plane and they're treating it. Every single flight, every single plane. And it's the only thing that had us at all. Mm. Okay, and then of course he goes to a conference where there were people from all over the country. You know, just scared the living daylights out of us. And I came home the other night and, you know, like I could sleep last night. Right. Okay. And that's the type of thing that I don't think we need to put anybody through, whether they're going to Arizona or whether they're going to Oregon or whether they're going through Atlanta on Delta. Uh, I don't think that anybody should be put in that situation. I think that if people are traveling, um, uh, students in our district or uh, employees of our district, if they're traveling during April, I think that we really need to be careful and we really need to look at, you know, where people are going and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And Lynn, just to kind of piggyback on your mm -hmm. comment, I know some of the uh, universities, it, because spring break, break is next week, it's this week, right. next week, and probably the week after for most universities. I know many uh, uh, kids that are traveling, even heading to Florida, they're told when they come back, uh, they need to self-quarantine for 14 days. Yeah. And, and they're not sure how they're going to get their yeah, coursework course. yet, so they have to figure, figure that all out. And that's regardless of where they travel. Three weeks spring break. So right. <laughs> Can't tell me they're not going to Florida. Uh, I, I did hear that um, um, the uh, mayor of New York issued um, a policy, or, or in conjunction with um, the superintendent there. I don't know exactly how it works, but that um, if there's a student, and I'm not sure if it's if it also applies to someone connected to staff or the student, if there's there's one person in the system that has tested been positive. has tested positive they would close the school for 24 hours to investigate and then they could make a determination going forward um, from there so just want to kind of put that on the table for something yeah. to think about um, should we get to that point so noted thanks okay so the coronavirus has taken over our lives, basically, for the last uh, two weeks. I don't think we're done yet. Uh, that is everything that I have, so thank you for that discussion. Okay. Down item five, committee reports. We have policy 5144.4, second reading. Yeah. Last board meeting, um, we had the first read for three policies. I haven't heard any questions over the last two weeks, so there would be a, there will be a, um, a motion later on to approve the three policies. Just to remind you, uh, 5144, which is physical exercise and discipline of students, that is a brand new policy uh, for us. The second is another new policy. And that is 5145.511, and that um, has to do with sexual abuse prevention and education programs. And the third policy is a revision, and that is 6159, and that's the one that uh, Karen Gogel um, rewrote regarding um, IEP programs and special education programs. I have one question about one of them on 5145.511. Okay, hold on one second. I'm sorry, John, which one? Uh, five, one, 
for yeah. Yeah, sexual abuse prevention. Yeah. There's something mentioned on page two in the middle. It says SDE guidelines, section three. It doesn't mention what SDE is or where section three is. Yeah, like I'm search. Mm -hmm. uh, you're at number two, John. I'm on page two. Yeah, at the very page end of number. page two, right above note. Okay, SDE is the State Department of Education. Okay. And in Section 3 is Section 3 of the State Department of Education. Oh, let me just let me read the paragraph real quick. So if you look at the State Department of Education guidelines, and I can do that just to double check, John, we would we should see a section three that clarifies that. It talks about the lessons that are going to be developed around like, that topic. Okay, because it didn't, it wasn't self-explained. Yeah, you I agree. Maybe we should spell out SD. I mean, you knew exactly what it was. I didn't. I don't know mm -hmm. any other board member would know what that is. Okay. There's so many initials, it's unbelievable. I know. <laughs> okay, anyone else? And anything else, at least? Okay. So we're good with the second. You looked at the second and third. We're all set with all three of them. Okay, budget. I think we've covered that, unless there's any other questions or additions on the budget. See none. Curriculum. Uh, well, we curriculum committee. Oh yeah, we didn't have a, a, a curriculum meeting, but uh, uh, Marjorie Light, who is the uh, curriculum director and, and the head of professional development, um, did send me an email that gave me uh, highlights about what she has done, and she's going to send uh, Lisa uh, the the verbatim transcript of this, which can be uh, entered into the minutes. Uh, but I'm going to give a, 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 some verbal uh, highlights uh, of, of what she uh, sent to me. Uh, since the start of 2020, the Office of Curriculum and Pro uh, Professional Development has developed and approved only over 40 sessions of independent and small group workshops and uh, professional development uh, uh, sessions. As reported by the superintendent, Susan Kavanaugh, who is our curriculum consultant, and director Marjorie Light, uh, hosted neighboring schools to share our solid next generation science standards uh, aligned coursework. Other districts had a presentation on alignment and were able to see NGSS in action in a, a kindergarten class and uh, two first and second grade classrooms. Uh, so just, this is the usual practice with uh, East Granby is that we uh, generally get out ahead of, of, of the curve on these uh, things. Uh, uh, generally, you know, a couple of years uh, ahead of everyone else and so we become then, uh, and in essence, a, uh, a laboratory where they, uh, other people come to us to see all the latest and greatest in uh, curriculum development. Uh, uh, working with uh, school uh, counselors, this is on the high school level in Principal DeMello. Uh, 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 Marjorie um, helped rewrite and edit the entire program of studies for 2021, including the development of some exciting new electives for high school uh, students. Uh, they participated in meetings on the digital divide and equity of access for all students. Uh, Susan Kavanaugh, again, who is our curriculum consultant, has continued to work on writing and aligning the social studies curriculum for a future board presentation. That will be coming up, preview of coming attractions. Uh, both uh, Marjorie and Susan have gone into classrooms as either observers or model teachers for a variety of grade levels and disciplines. Also, we have helped the faculty plan new unit, unit, learning units. And Marjorie has worked diligently, including nights and weekends, in preparing a timely plan of continued learning for the district, K-12, in the event of an extended closure. Again, uh, keeping in mind the, the possible effects of the uh, coronavirus. The draft is thorough, nuanced, and comprehensive. Uh, and again, uh, this will be um, part of the minutes uh, when Lisa gets a hold of it. 
any questions? Okay, facilities. John? We haven't really had a meeting. We've been busy with all sorts of other things, but I guess we need to schedule one to figure out what's going on. You know, we had that air quality report that we have to deal with, so hopefully things will slow down now. Any word from the building committee from All Grove on the air conditioning? Well, unfortunately, that happened last Thursday, and we were busy. So yeah, we, we weren't we, we weren't able to go. Well, that's right. We were busy very late last Thursday. <laughs> okay. So but, but I hear it's moving along. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's it's finally they've decided to uh, put that into high gear after uh, some um, roadblocks, and so that will we'll, we'll have some information forthcoming probably in the very near future. Maybe yeah. If we catch the minutes from the next from the yeah. last meeting, maybe we'll know. Yeah. Okay. And there's it says it be another meeting in, in two weeks yeah. from last Thursday, probably. So we'll be able to get you. A, a it's update. moving along, which is good. Negotiations, John. Anything that we don't know already? No. <laughs> when we get down to six D, okay. we'll certainly have fun. Okay. Uh, communications. That's me. Uh, the communications subcommittee will be receiving an email from me within the next couple of days so we can schedule a meeting. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. Anything else on that? Okay. Item six, recommended actions. First, if we get a motion to adopt the superintendent's recommended budget to present to the Board of Finance. I move to approve the 2.33% budget as recommended by the superintendent for presentation to um, the Board of Finance and for presentation of um, a two percent of what a two percent budget would look like. Okay. Have a second for that. For the request, I'll second. Michelle, the second. Okay. Any other discussion on that? We had a lot. Just real quick, John. Yeah. So when we last met, prior to that, and this is a question for you, um, Nancy. Um, you had the 2.99, and after we beat you up a little bit, we found our way to the, uh, and it was 241 when I left the room, and 233. I just want to make sure that you're comfortable as our superintendent as saying that your recommended budget for the 2021 year is not 2.99, but rather the 2.33. The 2.33 will allow us to move all of our programs forward. Um, again, those potential risks are out there. You know, we did we did push back all of the um, uh, teacher asks for instructional supplies. Um, we are down to um, you know some numbers that don't allow for a lot of variables. So I think that that's just something that we have to recognize and consider. Um, but I think the 2.33 will give us a program that is strong, comprehensive, um, and our, you know, our students will continue to, you know, enjoy a good, strong education. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, John. I like to say, you know, I think we should present the two two percent, you know, because it could very well be two percent. I mean, we're gonna. When will we know about the insurance? We probably need it. Late March, early April is the best I'm getting out of them. Seems like our numbers have always come in lower, so we have an issue with the 2%. It's part of the motion. Yeah. Yes, we're, we're, there were, we're, It's in the, the wording of the motion. It's in the recommended budget, but also we're also showing them what the 2.0 looks like, which is basically the, uh, the 2.33 minus $56,000. And another thing, is, as the Board of Finance has pointed out, that they they don't look at our line items. They only look at the, the overall percentage, and it's up to the board to decide where those line items are spent. So if we say that uh, we're taking the 2.33 uh, two, three, and subtracting 56 to get to the 2.0, we have, in effect, uh, given them, uh, we're, we're, we're submitting two budgets to them, the 2.33, uh, that is the uh, superintendent's recommendation and the 2.0, which is the Board of Finance recommendation. We're doing it all at the same time and in the same motion. Isn't that correct, Karen? It was in the same motion. Yeah, correct. That, that's what I was looking for, to see it in the same motion. Uh, I wouldn't want to tell them at 2% who, we don't know who they are yet or where they are as far as staff goes. I think. At 2.33, she shows from 2.33 to 2. It's going to be a staffing if the savings isn't made on the insurance, and that'll come at a later date. I, I 
I'm comfortable with the motion that way. But I just want to make sure we were letting them know we, we weren't ignoring the 2%, and then we're not. Michelle? Um, is your point that the savings on the insurance will be enough to cover the 56000 Well, I don't know exactly how much we won't know that. It, it most likely will not, in terms of the, because it's the dental and vision. The other insurance is, I took 18000 of a projected possible 64000 and already applied it. I'm only seeing that, and that 64000 is coming about because uh, Connecticut came up with a 3.99% increase. Now, because Anthem is already higher on its rates than Connecticut, we still took a savings of about 64. I can't, if I take any more than, it leaves me with about 40,000. I've already had one emergency go on to the family plan, which is $28,000 a year. So that's incorporated into next year's. That wasn't even part of it. So that brings me down to about, what, $20,000 left, if that. Uh, for any other changes, and I know there are three changes of a family plan coming on because they're going from a single plus one to a family. So I just ate up all my savings. So I would not recommend cutting any more out of the health care. <laughs> what, what other point I'd like to make to you is, Ray, take a look at the spelling on line 561 before it goes to board finance. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't even have to look. Yeah, we I don't go there. I thought I changed it. I thought you changed it. I did, did change it. Public school. I did change it. Apparently we didn't save it. <laughs> Could I ask, um, <laughs> Lisa? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm beat red, aren't I? Can you repeat, <laughs> if you got um, all the wording to the motion, can you repeat the words of the motion? Um, <laughs> I chicken scratch. Here we propose that the Board of Ed adopt the superintendent's recommended budget of 2.33% and present a 2% look like, and, and show and pre present what a 2% will look like to the Board of Finance per their request. I can't like understand it. my own writing. <laughs> that sounded like it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Even with uh, the stutter in with there. The, uh, with that wording in mind, you know, that it allows to show the 2% per their request, but it shows our support for the 2.33. Um, does that meet, John, what you were saying to, you know, when you say we should present to the board a 2.0? Do we have to amend the wording, in, in other words? No, I mean, we need to present a 2.0. I know we are going to. Okay, so as far as when we come to it's just the a vote for that. The presentation I that we received from the superintendent mm -hmm. today didn't show a 2.0 other than just like a single line item. Is that the presentation that you'll be making? Uh, you know, it's, I don't want to kind of just choose something to say where we're going to cut. You know, I, I don't, I know sometimes there's a tactic of we're going to look at athletics, we're going to look at the music program where we're going to. Um, I think what, we're, what we've decided is we will look at staffing across the board and, you know, make what makes sense at that time. We still have some numbers coming in for kindergarten. We're doing our um, um, course selections at the high school um, and kind of everything in between. So right now I couldn't tell you exactly what that position would be, but if we are um, required to make a cut, and you know, the other thing is $50,000 gets us to a 2.04. Um, you know, so we would be looking at, and it might be a part of an FTE, regard, you know, it might not be an entire, but we would have to look at staff across the board. But the point is, is that no student programs are affected? No, I think we would be looking at okay. staff. All right, thank you. Which relates to students, so, but, <laughs> but um, not program, not. But what Mark, Mark Porter would say is that, is, is that it's not, it's not the business of the Board of Finance to tell us how to spend those line items or indeed which ones to cut. It's really, uh, it's the board's budget and it's, they give us a lump sum and we choose the line items that we think will get us to that 2.0. So he wouldn't be, I mean, aside, he's seeing the 2.33 and noting, knowing that a 2.0 would, would, you know, you're subtracting 56, you know, and that's likely to come from staffing. I think that would be as much as a board of finance would re be required to know. And then they because also remind us that it's a reduction of an increase. And, you know, that's the, uh, did, um, they used to like, you know, they would Well, did you know to use that. the word modification? Yeah, which is a, a 
a key phrase. Uh, you know, and I think that um, it's a, I think the superintendent, the acting superintendent, to have um, outlined, you know, not hit a hot spot of a program in the school system, which is sometimes the, you know, the go-to way to generate interest and activity and, and emotion. Um, while we still need all the community support for this budget, we need the Board of Finances, you know, support for our budget, I think that it was a very responsible, you know, and prudent manner to address that additional cut um, if we were um, to be given an increase of 2.33 in that manner. I think that Just think to John's point statement. is that in the past, I believe that the superintendent presented the budget approved by the Board of Education and also, there was a second defined budget of 2%, whereas Missy's point uh, impacting the staffing and not having a defined 2% just to hand in and say this is the, what we decided, you know, an itemized budget like we have here for 2.33. That, that's probably your point, that you don't have an actual concrete document to show them. Well, we, well, they're, they're it's staffing. Points, staffing. Right? It's staffing. Yeah, I, I, I'm comfortable. It's clear with that. I, I, well, I look at it and think, I agree with you, Michelle. Person. It's a responsible budget. Uh, we're not scaring people. Not we're, we're not putting things out there to get people riled up. This is, this is what we're requesting, and here's what a 2% would be, and we're going to cut staff. And in the beginning of March, we don't know what that staff is going to be yet, but that's what it's going to be. And I would think that if it comes, I hope. It doesn't come to a two percent, but if it does, then that's what we'll look at. You know, I did hear Board of Finance members use some use two percent as a starting point. Of course, I also heard one percent as a starting point, but I think there's some flexibility, and I think this is a responsible presentation. And I and I hope that they see no one's trying to scare anyone, trying to be honest and put it out there. That's what that's what it costs. You know, I think we, we all realize at the time we put here, that's what it costs to have a, a good school program, a good school system. And we could also spend a lot of money and have a lousy school system. So we're proud of what we have. This is what it costs. And we're not, no scare tactics. And hopefully the town will support it. And I do want to thank everybody for the budget workshop because I know they were, they, for me, they were very helpful, you know, as we looked at everything kind of together, you know, with the administrators and then as, as a board, I think that, that was a really good process. So we all knew where we were headed, you know, and what the, what it would look like. Especially when you start with a, with a 5.41 and you get it down to a 2.33, that means there was a lot of whittling and there was a lot of uh, modifications. Modifications, yes. But, but about the the five point four one, there were a lot of assumptions on the high side or errors, so you can't really use that as a start. Okay, then the four point what was the other one? Let's just yeah. say it's two point three three. Well, well right now let's yeah. let's look at the motion we have here, which covers two point three three and two point oh. Presenting. Presenting a two point oh. Supporting two. There are any other discussions on the I'll motion, ask, John. I'll ask the same question I asked you earlier, Missy, and that is the, the 2.99 that we worked from last week. You're still comfortable with 2.33? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All those in favor of supporting the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. I'm going to abstain. One abstention, was there two abstentions? No. No, one abstention. Yes. Okay, one abstention. Motion carried. Okay, B, February. Just before oh. you go on, if anybody has a black Subaru Impreza, there's a dome light on, so we don't want you to have a dead battery. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I just said, it's gotta be one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Shall return. I have my cables in my trunk, so. All right, good. Yeah, um, don't leave it about me. Before we go on, I just have to report the boys' hockey team won their game oh, state excellent. tournament tonight. All right. We're going to go on to Thursday. Yep, we beat, um, we, we beat Newtown. I was, trying to get, I was trying to get your attention. Like, oh, did you get some help? <laughs> yeah, and I guess it was a, um, a crazy ending to the game, which okay. I'll have to hear all the details about. Do you know who they're going to play next? Uh, it is going to be uh, big team Staples. 
They're like the number one seed. <laughs> 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 yeah. But we got a good, we got a good team. But in towns, a good, big problem yeah. too. But there was, it wasn't very big. There was like 12 kids on the bench. It was so. <laughs> Well, we might as well get started. Okay. Right in. in your packet, there's the, uh, I included the uh, financial report. Mm -hmm. And some of the text in here, as, as stated earlier, yeah, we're working with the Allegor broker uh, to. Do we need uh, a motion to. Oh, before we proceed. Want a motion, then have them discuss it? Okay, I'll vote a motion to approve it. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, February financials. Okay, Bob. Want a second? Second. Take care of second. Thank comments, you. go ahead. <laughs> okay, comments. Um, we're, Missy and I have been working on the corrective action from the uh, audit findings. We completed it this evening, right before the meeting, but it was a little late to get on the agenda, so it'll be on the, uh, the 24th, it'll be on that 23rd, 24th. Next meeting's agenda, let's put it that way. Uh, we'll send it through Please to you. Is it? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The next meeting's agenda. We'll, we'll have the uh, corrective action for, your, uh, for your, your review before we send it off to the uh, town. <coughs> um, you've already seen the, uh, I got ahead of myself. On the 2019 year end numbers, we initially reported a, a $96,848.26 uh, say, um, realized savings that we were sending back to the town, <coughs> but because of unreconciled variances of $47,610, the net result was a $49,238.26 um, refund to the town. Uh, what we'd like the board to do is entertain a motion to request the $49,238.26 to be moved into the BOE non-lapsing fund. So I would, I would like to entertain that motion at that, at, uh, as part of this uh, report. Um, and for information purposes, there, were, uh, there are no um, transfers requested at this time. We're holding off to finish getting some of the uh, larger, larger ones coming in, such as legal fees and things like that, which I, I should freeze your budget. But <laughs> Joking. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you are up to over, I believe, over 60,000, and we're anticipating now an approach of 75 or higher uh, for your legal fees, just to let you know what we've seen. Um, as part of the uh, packet, I enclosed some correspondence on capital, uh, on the, the way we're requesting capital. So we're going to redo the way we request our capital. But having said that, um, that we only had, we're, su we're supposed to have three quotes. I'm not going to put through anything this evening. I'm going to hold off for the next meeting because I, the one quote that came in for around um, the audio vid video equipment came in without the labor and it's, and it's a bad quote, so it'd be a waste of time to send it over to the uh, Board of Finance. So that wouldn't be an apples so, to apples comparison. It's not an apple. So they're redoing that quote. Uh, they kicked them back. The Board of Finance kicked back the, uh, the capital request we sent through. Having said that, I'm looking for your guidance I, on the. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I just vegged out there for half a second. <laughs> <laughs> so the quote that we had submitted, which we had acted upon, yes, for whatever reason, didn't include all the installation cost. No, no, you, um, it was due in. And then the, when the quote came in, because it was pending the receipt of the final quote, yeah. the seventeen thousand dollar quote. Yeah. Um, when it came in, it came in late. The guy went on vacation. I'm giving you the full. Yeah, the full good. story. All right. I'm following. <laughs> I received it in. It didn't come in until today when I called and said, "Hey, where's this quote that you owe me?" When it came in, it came in short because he didn't include the labor. So, as a matter of fact, right before the meeting. So, I'm tabling that request because. The Board of Finance kicked it back saying you don't have the three three full quotes. And they are correct. We sent it over minus one quote. That'll be coming in, so you'll see it again. You'll have the $17,000. You'll have the full quote. We'll send it over as a nice, neat package. Having said that, I do have an issue. The curtain, only we only had one quote for the curtain. That's the, We only had one, and it's, and it's my understanding the Board of Finance will only accept a quote, a single quote, unless it's... Um, 
if it's on the state approved vendor list, okay? It's not on the VIP list? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Um, I've used this company many, many times, and it was selected prior to me coming on board. I'm going to check them out to see if they can get put on the state approved list, but at this moment they're not. How would the board like me to proceed? Right now we can't buy a curtain. We're all wrong. There's no one else, no other companies? I, curtains, not for eight or nine thousand dollars that I know of. I can, I can put it out again to bid, um, hmm. but it, it's probably going to take 30 days plus 45. Probably at least 60 days to get it back in. You know, Your thoughts? Are there any other curtain manufacturers or something that you can call and just... Well, that's right. I need, I need to... I found this. <laughs> that's why I put this a part of the packet. <coughs> Does the board know of any other way we can get it approved? And I'm just... It's your town. I'm not familiar with your processes or procedures. That's why I'm asking. Well, have you always had three in the past all the time with them? Well, if, if, if there isn't a, it's, it's just like uh, finance says, if, it's, if it, it can be approved with a single quote or two quotes if the vendor is on the VIP list. If it's not, they can't do that. So the, the two th options ahead of us would be A, get that person on the VIP list, or B, we put it out to bid again. So there's no other school system that has a, uses a vendor to refurnish their curtains? I will tell you this much. The last school system I worked with mm -hmm. or worked for used this same company. That okay, so, and, and so how did they get it through it, Vernon? Our, our process was different. Okay. Okay. A recommendation I mean, I can't get this on may be huh? that <laughs> <laughs> it's nine thousand dollars. It's about it's about nine thousand. It's eighty eight hundred, eighty nine hundred dollars. You know, I'm gonna say who's, uh, who's the company? ALSS. Does Drake uh, Masters? Manchester's. Does Drake Master do that? From I, I don't know. I haven't gone out to bid yet. I did. I, I, I just okay. got this late last week. I've been living budget numbers, so but I wanted to get your. The, the only thing I would think of is maybe Google or Stage Curtain suppliers in Connecticut. And but if it requires three quotes, then I should go out the bid. That's that's. Well, shouldn't you at least just call them or something and ask them to send you a quote for the like? But let me let me make some calls. I'll I'll do that. I mean, if you show them three, three, even three even quotes. if they're I guess verbal or over the phone. Things shouldn't have to well, I had an I email mean, with the other a good question. talking apples and different stuff. I had an email showing 17,000 as part of the other quote, but it wasn't a firm quote. Right. They rejected that. They wanted they wanted to see three quotes. Right. So is that 17,000 number going to now go up because labor wasn't included or No, no. It came in minus the labor. So I'm, I'm just waiting for him to rewrite the quote. Oh, I see. I mean, he so just has to show his seven. letterhead the quote labor Blah, 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 that type of thing. Okay. All right. I'll make some calls. Let's start there. All right. Let me make some additional calls between uh, the next few days. Let's see. Okay. I can see the Board of Finance being somewhat flexible if there's only one supplier in all of Connecticut, Springfield area, you know, but if there's more than one, then maybe we should just search them out somehow, and even if it's just an over-the-phone quote. Let me, let me make some calls. Maybe okay. all the other ones are... I just thought maybe you guys would know something or the, the board would know something. That I, Sorry. I, I've had an idea. Uh-oh. I mean, it's kind of plan Z, but if it's not that it's a, it's a fair amount of money, it's not a huge amount of money, but this time of year there's organizations in town that fund school projects and like to support things that are of... Um, you know, the kind of uh, item that's, you know, is around a long time and can be recognized as something that, you know, organization, and I'm a part of the Women's Club in East Granby. And the, we're going through our fundraising, and in June we give grants back to the community, and oftentimes we do look uh, for what the schools may need. I mean, I don't, you know, fundraising isn't what it used to be, so 9,000 is a lot of money, but maybe in combination with PTO, um, you know, they do a lot in the school system. I know they have a lot of other things, but uh, maybe the Lions Clubs, maybe um, through organizations in town to put the word out that there may be, you know, a need to fund something like that that would be a lasting um, 
item. I know the last women, 30 years. Women's Pub, we bought a tuba one year <laughs> that still is in use in the band. Um, That's like $5,000. Uh, yeah. We, we yeah. find it. We bought um, a thing for the ceramics room to press the clay and cut the clay. And it's made out of iron, and it'll probably be here you know, hundreds of years from now. Um, so uh, just, a, just a thought. Plan Z. Okay. Let me make some calls. And yeah. then fall else fails. Yeah. Let me know. We'll get some volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. I think Alice needs a, a cello. Oh, oh, it's a cello. Okay. Well, submit requests. That's what some take. software modifications. <laughs> 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 no, we need things that like will last a hundred years. No. <laughs> Not me. It's just that they like to support. Them. No, that's a that's a great point. That is a great idea. And, yeah. and I love those opportunities, but I look at curtains as I look at doors, and I think those are things we need to provide. And the extras, like instruments and but stuff you know, that people we, give us, are terrific. There's a lot of young new members of the club, and they have kids that will be standing on that stage doing their chicken soup with rice. You know that. Um, yeah, sure, every certainly. annual event, and that, still that, that makes it. They do. That makes a big deal. You might want to be a part of that. We were singing out the other day. <laughs> I would hope that Ray can find a couple others. Even if the companies don't specialize in it, they'll give us a quote and a bid and yeah. we'll be done with it. Can I ask one more question of Ray on um, the February financials? Are these numbers also reconciled with the town or are you up to February already? We are reconciled through January. The town has not gotten received all of our numbers yet. We haven't sent them over because we don't we've been working on the reconcili reconciliation process. We're waiting for my bank statements to come in for February. As of this past Saturday, we hadn't received them yet, have not received them. Mm -hmm. Once we receive them, we're hoping they come in this week because I'm, I've got a four-hour session this coming Saturday to finish up everything. Uh, we should be reconciled. Kelly and I will be meeting, and uh, we will be up to date. Okay, so the January one, you are reconciled. We're reconciled. Yeah, we are reconciled first. internally here to our in our eyes, we were reconciled internally. I still have to meet with Kelly, which would be next, I think on the, we're trying to schedule a 15th, give or take a few days, so I think it's the 17th, I'm trying to, I'm trying to schedule a meeting with Kelly so that we can sit down and say, okay, the, this is how we're reconciled, this is what the adjustments you need to do, these are the adjustments we need to do, that type of thing. So we're all in agreement. For, for which month, for January? For each month, oh. January, well, July, April. August, September, October, November, December, and January. Oh. And then it will and be monthly February. moving forward. Forward. And then we'll just have one month at a time. Okay, so we're not quite there yet. So right. Like 99% there. Okay. All right. Been a lot, a lot of work behind the scenes, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Uh, and the next page, uh, a motion to re uh, request the Board of Year End Balance of 49-238-26 to be moved to the OED non-lapsing non fund. Yep, I mentioned that. That's yep. C. Yep. Okay, do you want to? So, oh, I'm sorry. Do, do we want to? Uh, we have a motion for B. We have the motion, motion for B. Yeah. Okay. And then we could go to C. I'm sorry. We, we could move down. Do you, well, okay. we, we, if you're just done made the I'm motion. Done. If you're done Cheers. February, we had a motion and a second you want to call on the, the floor. Question, so I'm calling the question. Yes. I have no other questions. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. One okay. okay. One abstention. John abstaining. So. That motion has been approved. We'll go to C. I had mentioned I had mentioned earlier that after the reconciliation with the town, we have forty-nine thousand two hundred thirty-eight dollars and twenty-six cents in realized savings that we have, and I'd like to hope to see that we could get a motion to have that money returned to the Board of Ed non-lapsing account. Like I said earlier, we've used this account very carefully, and for very useful purposes without it being wasted. So uh, with that said, if I could get a motion for that. I'll okay. make that motion. Okay, we have a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Any other discussion on it? Uh, I just want to say that the, the last time that uh, finance um, uh, consented to, to um, create this uh, fund, I think there was one years ago, and they revived it several years ago, and um, put in 75000 of which was about half of what we were giving them um, that would have gone into the general fund. And we um, spent that over the course of maybe, I don't know, several years, five years maybe, four years. It wasn't like we spent it all at once. We Only when we needed that money and we couldn't get it in any other way. Uh, so it was, we were very uh, judicious in our use of that fund and it lasted 
for uh, many years. Yeah, and it's a new account that the state only started about five years ago, and they say you could uh, return up to 1%, and I guess it worked so well that the states actually said you could up it to 2% of your budget. So it seems like that it's worked for Board of Real Education. John Welsh? So you're looking for 49000 right? And change. 238.26, yeah. To the existing, is there a current balance? There is a balance. I don't know Small what balance, Small balance, maybe like 3000 5000 I don't know what the balance is. I think it might be. Balance. Hopefully it's a little more than that. John, but it's a small amount. Yeah, it's not a lot. Less, than, less than five? Does that sound I right? believe, well. It's not a lot left. Cause after the tennis courts, there's, there wasn't much left. Yeah. And the roofing project. Yeah. I couldn't tell you the exact amount, but it's. I would say three to five. Okay. You're probably right. So we're asking for this for this one time. Right, because yeah. I know last year they were confused as to Right, because we Pat Childs wrote the letter, right. I give her credit for it to be all the time, uh, but they caught that. Right. So just this one time. Uh, yeah, well, there could be an auto automatic. Because yeah. some towns have it now, yeah. it's automatic. It's yeah. just they get an automatic, automatic yeah. 1%. Yeah. But to be clear, for, on the record, for we're us, asking I'm asked for one time. time. Yeah. We're just asking for the one. For this time. Yeah. Next year, if we have money left over, we'll ask for it. Yep. Well, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. If we need it. I'm yeah. sure we, they don't want us bankrolling a lot of money, and we don't need to bankroll a lot. Well, is that what the statute says? That, that each and every year you have to request it, right? I believe so, yeah. Thank you. No, not every district does. No. No, no, no. The, I'm not sure if the statute says that exactly, John. I think but, it could be a policy that's adopted for. Okay. But we have to look at it. All right. I was under the impression. I was under the impression that, that, that you had to request it each and every year. I think you're right. And that you are limited to 1%. 2% now. 2%. Yeah, they changed it to 2%, yeah. but I think but it's right, that right. That you couldn't, every year. You couldn't take action that would then create this return of unexpended funds in perpetuity. Right. You have to ask for it and request it each year. Because I remember that we had a question about it when Pat Charles was here, and we took a look at it. Right. And I believe you're right that it yes. is in the statute, and yes. it has to be requested. Yeah. And one, when they first gave us that 75, which was I don't know several years ago, we never asked for it between now and then because it was always a, a balance that had enough in it that allowed us to do things like those tennis courts or the uh, the engineering study for the roof project mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried unanimously. Okay. D. Need a motion to approve the certified personnel contract. So moved. Okay. Bob with the motion. Do we have a second? Second. So was that carried? Yeah. Carried? carried. With a second. Okay. Discussion? John? Aye. I think it's a contract that's a little too rich for us. I don't think we can afford it. The increases are over 3% a year, and the budget caps are two and a half, so we're gonna end up losing something every single year when we move forward, so I think it's not something that's in the best interest of the students. Okay, anyone else? I'd like to Lucia? make a statement. Um, for the record, I wanted to commend Attorney Kyle McLean um, for his diligent, comprehensive representation of the Board of Education uh, during the negotiation process and his strong advocacy of the interests of the Board um, for the student children of our district, their parents, and the community of East Granby at large. I also thank my colleague members of the Board who thoughtfully and responsibly participated um, in the negotiation process. I want to state that I'm very disappointed and discouraged by the demonstrated lack of cooperation, concern, and reasonable concessions by the teachers union representatives uh, during the course of the negotiations, which could have particularly put student children needs first, and I don't believe that was done. Uh, nor were the needs of the parents or the public interests placed ahead of their own personal needs. Um, I therefore um, want the community to know that I'm voting against the approval of the proposed agreement 
uh, with the East Granby Education Association for the term uh, July 1st, 2020 to June 30, 2023. Again, um, I'm very pleased uh, with the work of the board and the work of Attorney McLean. We tried very hard um, to uh, advocate for the children, primarily the programs, and um, very disappointed with the process that we had to go through to get to where we got. That's all. Okay. Anyone else? Any comments? Um, just to ask a question Michelle. about the statement. Just um, so you're drawing a correlation between what the teachers negotiated for a contract and somehow damage to the children and the program? Well, respectfully, you didn't attend any of the budget they negotiations, and therefore you don't, you were not witness to what transpired. And if you had participated and witnessed what mm -hmm. happened during the course of those negotiations, possibly you would feel similarly. Well, because there was a lot of work put in by Attorney McLean. He worked his tail off to try to get us to where we needed to be. And I believe the people, the board members that were there, were very um, Which I'm not aware, aware. Yeah. And, 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 they, and they worked very hard to, to also advocate for us, and I just don't feel that it was a two-way street, that's all. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate your efforts, and, and you're absolutely right, I was not there at this negotiation. However, you know, I've sat on the board for 10 years prior, it was a two-year gap, and I'm back on the board. Couldn't participate this time, but I have been in negotiations. I just, um, wanted to just clarify, you know, in the beginning, what you were saying, uh, the correlation between the two, not not the details of it, but when you put those two ideas in the same statement, it just wanted to see if, if um, you know, I think that exactly. their, their interests, their personal interests were paramount. That's my statement. Their personal interests are paramount, period. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I'll call the I'll call the question and all those in favor of approving the contract uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Two opposed abstentions? I'm, abstain I'm abstaining. Two abstentions, three opposed, one, two, three, what do we have? four, five in favor. Then that's going that to, works. that works, that's going to carry, the motion carries. E, approve graduation date. Boy, can we do that? <laughs> yeah. August, September. <laughs> so um, I was going to ask for a motion to look at Wednesday, June 17th, which is the current 182nd day of school um, as the graduation date for uh, the class of 2020. It's, is this premature given what's going on with the coronavirus? I know people well, want to know. But I wrote the agenda, Lynn. <laughs> that one. No telling. Well, let's get a motion out there and then we, we can discuss I'll make that this. motion. Bob with a motion of second. I'll John with a second. Okay, now discussion. Okay. okay. Got it. Lynn. Did you get your answer? I, yeah, no, I already answered. did. I, okay. it, I'm just saying, is it premature? Like, can we kick this one more meeting? This decision? A lot will happen in two you, weeks. You can. We can. I think that the, the project graduation folks usually like to get this nailed down soon, but in light of the extraordinary circumstances of this year, I think it would be uh, premature. I, Michelle, I, I hope you don't mind me calling you out. No, right now, um, as a senior parent. <laughs> yes, um, you need a date, right? I mean, it's um, from my standpoint of view, um, you know, it's I don't have anything riding on it. The work that I do in project graduation, mm -hmm. the venue is um, very cooperative and very, um, you know, has some flexibility, unlike other venues I've chosen in past years, which doesn't mean that they. Ha, you know, they um, that they can let them ride for a while, but I think um, Project Grad, you know, we traditionally had an April date when we set graduation in the past. While the new, you know, state requirements allow us to do it sooner, I don't think anybody would be terribly surprised if we held off two more weeks. Um, just on that thought, though, um, you know, in, in light of additional days that may be added to the calendar, if any consideration could be given, 
you know, for our seniors to graduate, you know, at the 181 mark and, you know, schools come back in, you know, mm -hmm. following session in case we go to a Friday mm -hmm. kind of scenario or, because um, I know that's the day, you know, one of the days um, not great for graduation. But that's, I mean, mm -hmm. it may be the right thing to do. Because right mean, now it, it's so questionable. And at least your group knows right now is the 17th is what we're looking at, barring any... Yeah, they, they've kind of done the math yeah. and everybody's okay. looking at it. They, I mean, they'd like to know the date so they can tell the venue, but yeah. it, it is a place that has some flexibility. And I would think the venue with being, doing business with large groups is thoughtful of the concerns as well. So I would think well, they should understand. I don't know if they've had those discussions. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not part of that um, but conversation, but I'm sure. Never having come up against something like this before yeah. with the coronavirus. Um, it's just we're in a new, so new if, day. So if we would anticipate that we might be closed one or two days, that's one thing. If we're anticipating that we're going to be closed two or three weeks, that's another thing. Well, it's it's entirely. And, and I think either way, I don't see why we just don't throw a date out there. Because if in fact we're closed for two or three weeks, then of course June 17th is not graduation, and who knows when it might be. Uh, there doesn't uh, seem I, to be any pressing need to select the date tonight. I, I understand I, that. I kind of agree. I mean, in two weeks, we're not going to know any better. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think we will. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we will. You know, in two we weeks. Might. Two weeks. Yeah, two yeah. weeks. Yeah. Now we yeah. might not we'll know it's August. We might not. We might not be being. We might. We might. We might be canceled. So yeah. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, if you go too late into June, and we have this issue just on a, a typical year, uh, students that are heading out off to college often have their um, orientation um, weekends. They do. In June, so yeah. that gets tricky anyway. So I, you know. Worst case scenario, if we're closed for two weeks, we're all going to have to be creative in how we uh, respond to that because our seniors will most likely be on a, uh, you know, pathway somewhere else anyway before the end of June. So, Ms. Well, is, is this like the latest feasible day to have graduation so that we have as much time to have additional school days if need be? Well, June 17th is the 182nd day. Okay. And that's um, the board's policy is our students Wednesday. attend school for 182 Wednesday. school days. So can we just make a motion to use that date? Because that's, it is the 182nd day. That's how I have. That's, that's how I have. That's the motion. To, like, yeah, I mean, that'd be great. Safety. And then if we have to do some Concerns. kind of. Concerns. Right. right. Whether I mean, it's one day, two days, or two or three weeks, you know, right. we're going to have to deal with that. We have to adjust it. We have to adjust it. No, it's true. I just would hate for the community to say, well, why are they setting a graduation date? We could possibly go long, you know, thinking that we're not because responsible. We don't have a crystal run. ball. But well, so you so. know, you're you're darned if you do, darned if you don't. Right. So let's do. I mean, I would probably recommend if you set the date because if people are making travel arrangements, right. I think Absolutely. it would be complicating yeah. if you then change it. But that's of course barring a typical situation. Right now, we're not in a typical situation. Um, I said, I think if you said it, many people have, the, have we already set have a motion seat. on the table. Yeah. 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 Motion's you know, out there. As the date given and the public safety concerns. Lucia's suggesting change again. <clears throat> okay. So, mm -hmm. yes. so then the, the 17th with the caveat that. Well, who made the original motion? I did. Well, did there you is a, there's there's a motion to withdraw. I will withdraw the original there's motion. A, but there is a caveat already. On our school calendar, it says on the back side of it, in not really small print, it says that the, the calendar days are at the discretion of the Board of Education. So, uh, because they're, so we did, I forget exactly how it's worded. Do we have a calendar? The school present? year calendar may be modified as necessary at the discretion of the Board of Education to reschedule lost days. Right. So that, that's the statement that then if we change the date, if we have to change it, we don't have to re-vote on it and, and uh, if we have the discretion. Then we but, but perhaps in light of the special circumstances, even if we do approve this, then we should, uh, at least in the body of the motion, I would, I would re rephrase it, uh, acknowledge the, the um, tentative nature of this as because of the, the, the the well, health then we crisis just restate, of the state. We use the, the wording that's on the calendar, the, the yeah. statement there, to say that we still reserve the right to adjust the end date. We don't have to hash over all the, the reason. issue. 
because there could be another issue. <laughs> we could we could have it could snow. We could be it could snow. On yeah. March snow. We could be overrun with bears. Well, actually, it's designed when it does snow that you would not rechange the date. I mean, that's the reason why they've made it. Would it kill early. the virus? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> any other any other discussion on it? I know it's, I know it's a tough one. I just feel two weeks isn't a long time. To wait, but, uh, I think we're going to know something a lot more about the virus in two weeks, but I, I that's, that's the final word I'll say on it. Okay. okay, all those in approving the graduation date at this time it's gonna grow. for Wednesday, June 17th, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried for June 17th, pending... Yeah. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Anything else? <laughs> okay. No. Moving down to F. Can I get a motion to approve policy 5144.4? This is the one on students. So moved. Physical I exercise second. in class or physical punishment in class. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't call it. It's, pun it's not punishment. How do they call it's it? It's physical chefs. It's discipline. discipline. Physical, oh, exercise physical discipline. discipline. Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. You've got a second. You've got a motion on a second. Motion on a second. Yep. Good. Who, who's it by? Carrie, Carrie, Carrie and, Lynn. and Lynn. Okay, yeah. any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Item G, approve policy 5145.511. So moved. That was on carry. Motion? Second? Second. Second, Lynn. Any discussion? I got one John? other thing I just noticed. It's like at the very beginning, it says, in particular, sexism, racism, and heterosexism. Isn't sexism the same as, why is heterosexism in there? I don't understand. Somebody this comes from Cape. <laughs> this is the recommended language from Cape. Should have asked Kyle while he was here. <laughs> covers all the heterosexism. You've got to cover all the bases. I don't know if it does, John. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. Can you Google it? That was my <laughs> Well, we could always come back with uh, a revision. With a revision to it, correct. Okay, any other questions on it? So, are we going to also correct the uh, SDE guidelines so that we know exactly? If you want to make the motion with that um, embedded into it, I can certainly make those changes. Um, okay, so I'll withdraw my motion. Just amend it. Okay, I'll amend my motion to approve. Policy number 5145.511 um, to um, include the, the State Department of Education written out instead of being abbreviated. Yeah. And Section 3 being investigated. Clarifying Section 3. And Section 3 being clarified. I second. Okay, we got a second out of two. Any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Down to H, approved policy 6159 about IEP programs. Do I get a motion? Did I hear a motion down there, Bob, with the motion? Do I have a second? Motion to approve. Second. Second from Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. Any other questions, comments on it? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, field trips. Here we go again. <laughs> Missy. Is it Italy closed? Yeah, Italy's closed. Oh, this is for next year. That's what it will be closed next April. That's the thing. So this was the uh, field trip to Italy that was shared at the last board meeting, and we tabled it to this board meeting. Um, I was. I asked the advisor to do some research on the um, refund policy, um, and I did share a correspondence with everyone um, on that. Um, so again, it's you know we will make it very clear with the vouchers, the refund policy. This is with EF tours, um, but of course this was prior to this situation as well. So we might be able to re be able to renegotiate a better rate. <laughs> yeah, right. First of all, well, before we discuss, can I get a motion to approve it? Okay, okay John, motion to approve it. Bobby second. seconding it. I'll okay, second now it. questions or comments. John, you may you yeah, may be right with that point. Any other right. questions? So, so I'm sorry, so again the travel is next April? It is. And you've locked in a price. There's no cost to the district. 
Correct, and correct. We, and we know that there's a certain date at which there's a, either a cancellation. Yes, there's a, a pretty lengthy cancel by type of thing. Mm -hmm. Percentage back, percentage back, and then yep. finally if the, the, the district within a certain amount of time um, what they will do is either reroute their trip yep. um, or provide uh, vouchers. Sure. Yep. And then um, and then the students and their parents do have the opportunity for quote unquote uh, trip insurance. Actually it's required. Thank right. You. Okay. It's built into the price according to what you sent, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, the name. It was built into the price according to what you sent. It was, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't cover such instant instances. Correct. Right. What what such instances? Uh, like a like when the country closes, yeah. it doesn't re allow for refunds. It might actually quarantine might be one of them. Uh, but it's, it's 14 <laughs> months from now, though, so it's, it's, it's very likely that this will have come and gone by then. I mean, are, are students still interested in going to Northern Italy? Hey, I'll go. I believe they are. Yeah. <laughs> not, not this April. Right. Oh, that brings up another question. Now, the folks who are going to, who are going to be going to Arizona, would this create a conflict for them if they were uh, also planning to go to Italy this year? No, oh, Italy's next year. Well, they, 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 they can. can. Yeah, yeah, but they, they wouldn't be able to go to both. Well, how, does that, yeah, how does that work if they have to roll over their refund on it? So, so the it's kids with, the so we don't have a roster yet for Italy, so if they are part of the Arizona trip, they would just need to recognize that and then they wouldn't sign up for the right. Italy trip. Okay. Right. Okay. So basically, just leave it to the students and the parents. Let them make the decision. We're just allowing them to go. Okay. Sounds good. A year is a long time. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then all those in favor of approving the field trips to Italy, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Agenda items for future meetings. Uh, Bob, what is the NYC, NYC reference there? Well, I think to go on Italy, am I correct, out of New York City? Oh, oh thank is that you. Another I trip? apologize. New York City is another trip? Um, we've actually, uh, we've already pulled that one. Oh, okay. That was yeah. for New York City. This, um, it's an annual trip that our high school social studies um, takes, but we've already, um, we're not doing that. They will, it's a junior trip. They'll be able to go next fall as their seniors, so still participate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, well, thank you Lucia. I thought it was yeah. Italy through New York City. <laughs> JFK yeah, yeah. or something. Okay, seven. Next uh, agenda items for future meetings. We'll be looking at policy 1330 for a first read. Bob, could you let us know what that is? Any yeah. Ideas? Use of school facilities. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Lucia, Thank you. We're doing some research on that, right? <laughs> oh, we've been yes. doing a ton of work on policy. that. Policy. Lucia's been drafting policy. Awesome. Okay, I had to make comments Goodness. from visitors. Well, with Miss Miguel. Awesome. I got a comment. No comments. No comments? We appreciate all of you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I just want to call It's soon coming. Stay okay. Two hours. They got a motion down. for adjournment. Motion oh, to oh. adjourn. Well, Thank you so much. Wait, wait. Um, I, I know that at the last quarter, one of the last quarter finance meetings, uh, they asked for a closeout of some of the uh, old capital accounts. I don't know if we should put that on a future agenda. I, I, I think, think we should. Idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yes. Close out. Do Close we, out any other. Do we still have some? Oh, we have right. like the minimum like balance. I think we do. Removal. Ray? I'm sorry. Do we have, we, we still have accounts, capital accounts that have the minimum balance? I have to check. I haven't even gotten that far. I mean, you can check with Kelly. She'll be able to. Yeah, I don't think the tanks have been put okay. to the board of finance. And there's a lot of them that should be closed out. Yeah. Like, I know one of them was the oil tank removal at all grove, yeah. and then the conversion to natural gas. Uh, for a hot water heater versus and that's rolling then oh, I think that's one of our that's rolling into the general fund yeah whatever's left over that yeah, we're rolling to yeah I think there's a few others but we're about to roll into the, uh, the town capital correct yeah because it right. came out of capital right so we're rolling into the town yeah. capital right but right. well, we have to close them out before right before they can do we have to sign up on. we have to agree to it yeah okay did I get a motion for German Probably a three, four. I'll, I'll do it. Bob. Um,
Second. Michelle, Nelson. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you.